is Jalen Rose. I'm David Jacoby. We are Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen, what is it that we, we get do? We what they want. In game two of the NBA Finals last night, the people of Phoenix got what they wanted. It wasn't just the Chris Paul show. It was a full team effort led by Chris Paul. Devin Booker got buckets, hit some shots. Mikhail Bridges had a game. Aiton did a lot of things to help contribute to the win. Jalen Rose, what do you think of the three-point barrage that the Suns unleashed last night in Phoenix? I'm excited about this year's NBA Finals. Mm. Fresh faces. Two teams. No player on either squad has ever won an NBA championship, Jacoby. And for the Phoenix Suns, they earned this in the regular season with home court advantage. In game one, it was about fast break points and points in the paint. In game two, it was a three-point barrage. They made 20, and they got them in all ways, shapes, and forms. Mikael Bridges got him off to a good start. Jay Crowder was making threes. How about Cam Johnson? He's been nailing threes the entire postseason. And they were extremely well coached and they got amazing guard play. Devin Booker was distributed early. They were in fast forward. That's what they want to do, play with tempo. CP3 said it. The old man like to walk it up sometime. That's the fourth quarter. You the rec ball expert. You know how this works. Early in the game, everybody running up and down. Fourth quarter, we go slow it down and get it to the old guy and close these boys out. It's like the NCAA tournament in a lot of ways. And I was really looking like really close because you know I was at the game and you know my yep. vision ain't the best. So I was looking was really, nice. really close. And I was like, Chris Paul, Hall of Fame guard, he is better than Drew Holiday. Mm. Devin Booker, an ascendant superstar, he is better than Chris Middleton. And then I was watching DeAndre Ayton change ends of the floor. And I was like, the better team is winning. That's why 89% of the time, the team that goes up 2-0 in the NBA Finals ultimately wins the championship. Giannis and the Bucks did come from behind a 2-0 deficit against the Nets, but that was obviously injuries helped them get there. But Jalen, we talked about Booker and CB3. You did a great job just eloquating about how excellent they've been in this series. But last night was Mikhail Bridges. Mikhail Bridges, I mean, he had the game of his life last night in the NBA Finals. Dun, dun, he was dun, hitting threes, dun, dun, dun. he was driving, and he made things very difficult on Chris Middleton. You're going to hear a lot about how Holiday and Middleton didn't perform last night, and they didn't, but the Suns had a lot to do with it, and so did Macau Bridges on the defensive end. Mr. Rose. I was singing the bridge is over, the bridge is over. <laughs> when he was out there getting his career playoff high, he was balling. He always played D, but now instead of being a, just a spot-up shooter, he was mixing up his game. He did a mm. pump fake a couple of times, dribbled in, shot a couple of different type of shots, and he's playing with a lot of confidence in front of his home fans. Jalen, Giannis Antetokounmpo was dominant last night. This dude needs help. Someone help Giannis Antetokounmpo get a win in the finals. He cannot do it all himself. He had 42 points, Jalen Rose, getting whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted. Someone needs to help this man if they're going to win in Milwaukee. The last time the Bucks won a championship, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was on the team. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling like Chuck D watching Giannis last night because he was going ooh and ah when I jump in my car. He was balling like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He was out there blocking shots. He was out there dunking on them. Stretch Armstrong leaps. Yep. And then the step back one leg jumper. He knocked down a couple of them too. In the first half, I looked up, I was like, how many rebounds do he got? You see, like he's grabbing every rebound too. And for him to return from the injury that he returned from, the hyperextension of his knee, it's incredible that he returned. And it's awesome that he's performing at the elite level that he's playing at. But he's going to need some help from Middleton. And he's going to need help from Drew Holiday, who you reminded me earlier. Um, Drew Holiday 
They gave up a couple of first round picks for him. Yeah, they did. They need him to play like the guy that had 20 and 10 against the Nets. And Chris Middleton. He's vastly different stats wise when they win versus when they lose. And in particular, on the road versus at home. Those guys are gotta be better if this is gonna be a long series. Yeah, they absolutely do. I mean, Giannis just needs help. It felt like Pat Connaughton was the second option last night, and they're not going to win the NBA Finals if you're relying on Pat Connaughton, who I love to be the second option for the Milwaukee Bucks. You know what happens Jaylen. when you're shooting bricks like that? And those are great graphics. There's a Jerry West logo on the side, a sticker on the side of the backboard, and mm -hmm. people always say, you missed that. You're trying to give Jerry the logo a concussion. You know what I'm saying? Because he's not wearing he a helmet. One. You shoot He's it. in concussion protocol right now. He's in concussion protocol right now. Because I remember exactly <laughs> the one you're talking about. It actually ended up working out for him. Went off the backboard. Looked like a pass. Jalen, there was a moment Trying last night. Trying to get a logo night. of concussion. When they, usually when they play sound from coaches, it's just like, hey, guys, hustle harder. Let's win. But there was a moment last night Bruh. between Monty Williams and DeAndre Ayton that really, really touched me. Let's listen to head coach of the Phoenix Suns, Monty Williams, talk to his young star got his first two points. And there's a lot more responsibility on him without Sarich, and now Craig is gonna be out. And as a young player, you notice, sometimes guys judge how well they're playing by how well they're scoring. And that's basically what he was letting him know. Continue to change ends of the floor. Continue to be somebody that impacts the game. And that's what he started to do. And before you know it, his effort felt, allowed him to fall into a dunk and then get a couple of layups. And one of my favorite plays in the history of basketball happened in this game. What's that? It was like the Harlem Globetrotters, like seven or eight passes. Ball kept On moving. The 12 pass, Nobody the 12 moved. Pass Nobody yep. get hurt. Nobody moved. Nobody get hurt. Eight and boom. And one. And so that play signified to me that the Phoenix Suns are getting ready to win the championship this season. Well, Jalen, I think that this series will at least go five games. And if this series does go back to Phoenix while you are on the road, you need to find this guy. You need to find this Suns fan and hang with him after game five because he's got it. You need to find that man right there when the series goes back to Phoenix, Jalen, because that is my guy. Just the... He, he looked like, wait a minute, hold on. He looked like somebody I had a notable debate with like 10 years ago. He looked like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo to me. <laughs> That's what he looked like to me. Now, Jalen, I'm going to say this is, I'm not going to say this series is going to be a sweep. I think that the Suns will win. I think it will go back to Phoenix. But just imagine if it is a sweep. Because that would make this man the Suns and Four guy. That would make the Suns and Four guy an absolute legend. A legend. We all know the Suns and Four guy. If this is actually Suns and Four, he will go down in Phoenix history and never buy another beer the rest of his life. Jalen, Dame Lillard is with Team USA, and he was asked about his future with the Portland Trailblazers. Guess what? We'll tell you what he had to say right after this. You're watching Jalen and Jacoby. Coming to you live above the Heineken River Deck here at Pier 17 in New York City. Welcome back to Jalen and Jacoby. Jalen Rose, Team USA is in full swing. And Dame Lillard was asked about his relationship with the Blazers. And here's what he had to say. But anything that I, that I have to say, I'm going to say it directly to to Neil and I'm going I'm address it directly with with my team so um I don't really have nothing to say to you guys about it you know it, it's a lot of things being said and um sometimes words being put in my mouth and I haven't said anything Jalen he didn't say much but that doesn't mean we're not going to talk about it what did he say or not say that you think is an indicator of his future he didn't make a long-term commitment, but he handled it like a true professional. Anything I say is going to be point A to B. See your way out of it. In other <laughs> words, whatever I say to him and them, the only way y'all going to know about it is if they say something. Because I'm not saying anything. 
And that's how you want your franchise player who psychologically and or physically could be going through some career thoughts and changes at this point of his career. Mm. He's on Team USA. He's one of the elite players in the game. You got him under contract another few years, but I'm not gonna ignore this. Him and Chauncey Billups are gonna get along just fine. Mm -hmm. They just added Scott Brooks to the coaching staff too, who coached Russ at a couple of different spots. They have a really nice backcourt. CJ McCollum is still there. Nurkic is a guy that's been inconsistent, giving them minutes down low. And so if you're Portland, by no means do you panic because Chauncey Billups is going to be a great hire, just like Teron Lu ended up being a great hire. Jalen, you know what? You did a great job translating how he felt and what you heard. Do you know what I heard? Dame Lillard to the Knicks. That's what I heard. Dame Lillard to the Knicks. That's what I heard. I don't know what you heard, but I heard Dame Lillard to the Knicks in Madison Square Garden pairing with Julius Randle, get Mitchell Robinson back, and you bring the title to Madison Square Garden. That's what I heard. Moving our attention to the NFL and the quarterback situation in New Orleans, which you and I don't think should be a competition. No. However, general manager Mickey Loomis said that Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston are going to be competing for the job. What do you think? I just love when we were having this conversation, we were like, okay, let's actually compare them as quarterbacks and look <laughs> at the TDs versus interceptions. Like, and <laughs> it, it's just so funny. You asked for them to put covered punts on there, but I yeah. see that didn't make the graphic, right? No. <laughs> I mean, and total yards wasn't on there either. And total yards is not even close. There's one quarterback and one sort of like five tool player. I'm yes, gonna have my quarterback play knife. quarterback. I'm gonna have yes. my quarterback play quarterback. The guy that plays quarterback, I'll have him be the quarterback. The guy that's also a tight end, also a running back, also in punt coverage, he can do that other stuff. Remember when we had Cam Jordan on the show, we asked him about the quarterback position without Drew Brees. And he never mentioned Taysom Hill. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't hear Taysom Hill's name, not once. His name never was said. So again, he's a productive football player, and there are going to be times where he makes big-time plays. But if you're the Saints, give the job to Jameis. But I understand he got to earn it. I get it. Mm -hmm. But We know I who's going to start week one. He's going to play really well. I think he's going to play really well. I think people underestimate Jameis, and he likes to throw that long ball. Yes, he does. Moving on to the defensive side of the ball, Jalen. Just take a look at this video of Chase Young. Just imagine being a quarterback or a running back and having that man wake up and just want to hurt you. You know what? I'm t you know what? What? I got to get in shape. You know? <laughs> you too. I, I know you've been on the shape. road with the finals. Yeah, I've been man, able to I've get been, in the gym. I've been eating roll service. You know, yeah. drinking fruity <laughs> drinks. You know, I've been eating hibachi. You know, fried food. I got you know, chips, <laughs> Eatles. It is a you know big, I mean? big you season Chase, for Chase Young. And, oh, oh, but, but in all honesty, they just need some quarterback play, though. Like, we can't overlook that. I ain't mm -hmm. mad at Ryan Fitzpatrick, and their the defense job, led by him is going to be terrific. But they got to get some quarterback play if they're going to win the division. Absolutely. Jalen Rose. While we were all focused on game two of the NBA Finals, the greatest athlete in the history of sports won the Scripps National Spelling Bee. 14-year-old Zaila Alvangard not just won the Spelling Bee, but then we unearthed her other talents. This woman can not only spell, but watch what else she can do. Jalen, look at this woman. I mean, I, mean, I don't even know what this is. I don't even know what this is. What is She's this? She's a queen to me. Ooh. Like, such an inspiration. So much intellect, discipline, hard work, sacrifice, dedication. Like, watch I, I want to applaud her entire support group, mm -hmm. her family, her coaches, like everybody that's doing such an amazing job for this young lady who's an amazing inspiration, Jacoby. The way people see the greatness in a Michael Jordan or a LeBron James or a Tom Brady, that's how I see in this beautiful, talented young lady. And I like how you said unearthed because 
in the 96 years of that spelling bee, 96 years, the first time an African American has won. That is glorious. And I stand with her. Very gracious, very proud of her. Congratulations to Ms. Avant-Garde. Jalen, on Sunday, we have a must-win game three for the Milwaukee Bucks in Milwaukee. Will that man get enough help to get a win in game three? We will tell you right after this. You're watching Jalen and Jacoby.